Hi, it's Kev from Innovative Teaching Ideas and just a bit of background to me. I've been working with teachers for just about a decade, teaching them how to use technology in the classroom. And I just thought I'd make this video to highlight a tool that's come out that is basically the biggest thing I've seen in technology and education in my career. And I guarantee it will be a big point of discussion with teachers, students and parents in 2023. And if you have five or 10 minutes at a staff meeting to have a look at this, if you have no idea what it is, um, I strongly recommend you open your eyes to it because it is here, it's no longer coming um, and it's pretty amazing and pretty scary in some ways as to the direction that this could all go but we have to go in with open mind and look at the opportunities and challenges it offers it offers us. So the tool I'm talking about is called ChatGPT, you might have heard a lot about it in the news um, and it basically is a chat bot that uses very natural human language and it's different from Google search. And I wanna talk about this because most people just think, oh, it's Google search all over again. So the big difference between Google search and this is that Google search indexes the web and it looks at websites and web pages that have been written by humans and says, right, this has been popular. This has lots of authority because it's been written by Encyclopedia Britannica or an educational group. And we're gonna rank this number one. And if you type in a question like, what is an elephant? It's going to give you um, a description from a specific website and then a whole list of other options you can go to for different perspectives. What ChatGPT does is it looks at all of that information on the web and it writes its own examples or, or answers its queries itself in its own language. So effectively you can ask it a question and get 10 different responses and the responses you get have never been written before. So there's obviously some real opportunities there for kids to just say, well, this is written in my own language or for you to create things and put it in your own language. Um, and again, some amazing opportunities here, but also some pretty scary challenges as teachers as to police how and when this is being used, um, if that's something that we need to do at all. Now, I could try and explain it a lot further, but I think the best thing to do is just go through a series of examples and I'm gonna start off with them right now. So let's give it a really simple query for starters. Okay, so here we are at ChatGPT, chats.openai.com. Just sign up for a free account. It's free at the moment, that may change in the future, I don't know. We're gonna go through a series of questions here that really goes through the potential and opportunities this can offer us. Let's start off with something really simple for it. What is an elephant? Given me an example here or definition of an elephant that is 100% correct, but it's probably a little bit complex. If I asked it to read it, if I asked it to rewrite it for a six year old, instantly, an elephant is a big animal that lives in different places in grasslands. So completely different language, and that may never have been written before because this has been written through artificial intelligence. It is pulling this from thousands of different websites and then putting it in its own language. So let's step it up a level. This time, I would like it to write me a poem about an elephant. Instantly, we are seeing rhyming language, stanzas, talking about all the aspects of an elef elephant, its habitat, its physical makeup, um, gentle giant. If I got that from a student, I'd be very impressed. Let's go a little bit more complex. This time, I want it to write me a poem, but this time it's got to use Shakespearean language, and I want it to reference the Disney film Dumbo. So I've given it, a, thrown it three different things here. Instantly we can see the Shakespearean language flying through the air. So it's made the connection to Dumbo, done everything I wanted. And talking about it being locked and cruel, vile, it's made the connection to Dumbo quite strongly. So let's step it up and be really specific about how a student might write this. I'm a year nine student. I'm gonna say, write me an essay, 500 word essay about elephants from the perspective of a year nine student. What we 
we're seeing here is probably a five paragraph essay. It's a bit of an introduction. It'll break into the various um, features, again, habitat, physical makeup, um, and then a conclusion at the end. If I was to get this from a year nine student, I'd say it's a great piece of work. I'm gonna stop generating there because really what I want you to do is jump on and have a play on this. But let's push this a bit harder. This time, I'm getting it to write me a persuasive essay. So I wanna see a bit of emotional language here and I wanna see strong arguments, strong language about why circus elephants should be outlawed and again, make that reference to the Disney film Dumbo. So the first, essay, the first paragraph is great. Give me an overview of the topic. Let's see what it comes up with its first argumentative paragraph. The living conditions of circus elephants are extremely cramped and unsanitary. So we've got strong language there. Inhumane. Very good use of emotive language. Three strong arguments. If I was to get up and read this in a debating contest, um, it would be a great piece of work. And it's already in the conclusion, giving me alternate options. It did reference the Disney film Dumbo there, but didn't go into it in too much detail. Again, if I was to regenerate that, I might get a slightly different response. Okay. Now we're gonna push this quite a bit harder. I'll get it to stop generating there. I wanted to rewrite this essay in the style of the comedian Ricky Gervais from The Office, and I want it to be specifically targeted at young children. Now Ricky often puts questions into his dialogue and Sure, we'll see plenty of these. Ladies and gents, have you ever seen an elephant in, in a circus? So he's going to open with that. The language, it is definitely targeted at younger children. And if he was reading this to me in his voice, I would not query it one bit that he'd written it. It is definitely um, the style of language and writing he would use. Now I'm going to let this one finish because the final thing I'm going to do in chat GPT is actually grade this essay. So I don't need to ask it or copy and paste the essay into it. I'm just gonna say, could you analyze and grade this essay for a year nine student? Now that's interesting. It's telling me for the first time ever, it doesn't have the capability to grade any written work. But it's gonna give me feedback. I've never seen that before. It has given me grades and it still is. It's telling me that the essay produces a well-argued stance, well-structured, um, the use of examples such as Disney film and Dumbo and the comparison of human livings make it relatable. Um, and it's given me an overview or a great response I could give to a student. Didn't actually give me a grade. This is chat GPT. Every one of your students is gonna know about it. If not, if they don't know already, know about it now. They're going to know about it this year and it's going to become a really hot topic as to what do we do with this thing and we will be looking at this in future videos about the pros and cons and opportunities and how you can use it as a teacher to be more productive how you can stop students from plagiarizing and ripping information from the web how do we attribute copyright things in using this what are some great ways you can use this as a learning tool with students so please subscribe and follow us to get those videos um, but in the meantime, go away and have a play on this yourself. See what it can do because it, I've just literally scratched the surface here. There is so much more to it we'll cover in other videos. Um, and if you've got the chance, I'd love you to pop a comment in below just talking about either an opportunity or a threat you see this putting forward to education because it is a game changer. As I said, this is the biggest technological leap I have seen in education in my career. Um, in 20 years and uh, it's not going to disappear and you cannot ignore it because it is out there and it is pretty amazing and yes I can see both sides of the opportunities and the challenges that it gives us so thanks very much for watching and we'll see you in the next one